Hello Capricorn. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Capricorn is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Capricorn, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And this is a Princess of Pentacles. This is, this has got to be the best card in any tarot pack, especially the Thoth pack, because this card represents every other card. Everything is in here. So it is infinite potential, but in a manifested form. This is literally all of the resources around you. This is a card that's kind of saying, you're going to be getting everything you need in this situation. All of the resources that you need to make this happen are coming into your life. Okay, we might just have to kind of reach out and take them, ask for them, uh, create them, recognize them, okay? Everything you need right now is becoming available to you. Let's put this into some context. What are you doing um, and what kind of resources do you need? Let's see what else we've got. Oh, look at that nine of pentacles gain. Um, this is really the idea that you are taking this kind of infinite wilderness. This is like the uncarved block. This is all of the infinite resources. And this is you really carving out what you need and creating the life that you want, right? We are, we're taking the uncarved block and we're just kind of chiseling it away until we reveal the masterpiece uh, that's within it. And this is really you doing the work. Right. This is you with all the resources that you need, and then you are applying those resources uh, to whatever this project might be. Here's the moon card. Oh, we've got a knight of, knight of swords here. And a queen of swords. Interesting. Fire and water, both in the suit of swords. So it has to do with the communication. Okay. Um, I think there maybe are two sides of you or there are two people involved here. One is a little bit more impulsive, a little bit more quick to make decisions, really is just, you know, rapid fire with the answers. And the other person's a little bit more thoughtful, right? Tries to see the bigger picture and makes maybe calm, calculated decisions, whereas this person is just like right away, instantly knows what to do and, and, and does it. Perhaps it is the combination of these two energies that really leads you to your star. Being quick and decisive, being very kind of rapid fire with your communication. There's no, there's no hesitation here. But there's a lot of thoughtfulness, a lot of, um, a lot of forethought, right? And I think we're really manifesting our destiny here. And this is what we're kind of, this is what we're carving out. This is very interesting. Now let's see, we've got a, a Ten of Wands. Interesting, we've got the Hierophant. We've got the Chariot. And we've got a Seven of pentacles the seven of pentacles looks dark it looks like nothing is growing it looks like a barren land but if you look closer at this card you see that these are sprouts that are just starting to come up right and it still looks dark because this hasn't it hasn't um borne fruit yet yeah it hasn't produced the kind of end product that we are looking for this is us um, doing the work required to produce the fruit, right? This is, everything is starting now to grow. We're starting to see things um, going our way. Things are happening. Things are becoming, right? We're getting this abundant future that we really want. I like that we have the Cancer energy with that Chariot card because Cancer is your opposite sign. It is kind of your shadow self. It is kind of, uh, if you're consciously trying to be thoughtful and take your time and be very cautious and have a lot of just kind of um, 
think things through very well. Uh, the cancer energy is your alter ego. That's the part of you that just rushes through decisions and just gets things done rapid fire. So we really need to be whole. We really need to be connected. And the Hierophant is what connects above and below, right? The Hierophant is the, the, uh, the interface between heaven and earth or between your conscious self and your unconscious self, between Capricorn and Cancer, the opposite sides of the wheel of the zodiac, right? So it really is about wholeness. It's about integrating every aspect of yourself. We even see with the 10, the 10 of wands, it looks like it should be a two of wands, right? Because there's two of you there. And it could be, again, uh, it could be that you're doing this with a partner. I think some of you, uh, there is definitely, um, there's a partnership aspect here. I think it's kind of partners with our, with our true self. We're making, uh, we're making an alliance. We're forming an alliance with that alter ego. Uh, I think we're coming into a partnership with our true self, with our guardian angel, with spirit. Right. And so the challenges that may have been too much for you to do on your own. Now, um, it, it's the load is lessened. The weight is a little bit lighter because we have this counterpart. We have this divine energy with us. It may be taking the form of, yes, a partner, another person, maybe a spouse, romantic partner, friend, family member, coworker, whatever it is. We're getting, we're getting the resources that we need. We're getting the assistance that we need. And that's part of the resources, right? It's just everything everything of every type that we might need to create this success, to get this project growing, to get this life becoming what it, it is meant to be. Now, um, you like to drink a lot of tea. There's something with the chamomile tea that you like. Yeah, I feel like you're kind of a sometimes tea, sometimes coffee person. There's two sides of you. I really feel that. I feel like we're starting, we're starting to kind of embrace that shadow side. And I feel like usually you're the coffee drinker, right? But I feel like lately it's been more relaxing, calm, chamomile kind of tea, right? And I, I can relate. I'm like that too. Um, even, the, even the moon card, it shows the two pillars. And it's kind of walking in between those two pillars. Finding the place where those two energies meet is the real key for you. And it's easier to walk through this darkness when we feel like uh, we're not alone. And we may be talking literally. You know, there may literally be a person with you, a partner here. But knowing that our spirit, that our soul, that God, God is deity, guardian angels, ancestors, spirit guides, high, higher self, true self, the Hierophant is with us. Yeah. And this, I think, is really, this creates um, a lot of strength in you. Now let's select the mystery card before we get too far into these energies. This is one random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. And we're just going to set it aside right over here. We're going to put Jimbo, aka the Lizard King, right there on top. And we're not going to look at that card until the very end. But it will tie everything together. It will give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. If at any point, during this tarot card reading, you feel like you know what that card is. Put your prediction down in the comments. Let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise of intuition. All right. Now let's get started. We've got major, 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 and major. A lot of major arcana energies. It's kind of the idea here that we feel that there is this uncertainty about things. But we're, we're learning to kind of trust in spirit and follow this guiding light, follow what our soul is really telling us, right? Uh, follow the wisdom that is kind of being projected outwardly, right? The Hierophant's in the position of the environment. So I think you're really able to take the subtlety of what's going on around you and gain a kind of insight into it. Right, kind of a clairvoyance here, but it's more like you're taking the subtle clues from everything around you and distilling that into a kind of insight or clairvoyance, right? Giving you uh, a pathway to move forward. It seems like magic, um, and it is, but I think it's from your own kind of higher mind. Yeah. We also have the, um, the moon card here, which 
is the idea of this shadow side, the nighttime land, right? The darkness that is kind of within us. And I feel like this is where that cancer energy lives in you. And if we think of Think of Cancer and Capricorn. We kind of think of Cancer being very family-oriented, liking the home, wanting comfort, safety, security. Crabs, right? They all travel in big groups, big schools. I don't know what they're called, but in big groups of crabs, yeah. But then we think of the Capricorn energy. It's solo, solitary. It's the goat. It's the lone kind of beast of the wilderness that kind of does everything on their own, right? Makes their own accomplishments. Um, so we're, we're blending those two kind of energies together. And this is really, this is representative of us going into that shadow land, that nighttime world, the, the upside down, if you're a Stranger Things fan, and finding that part of ourselves and forming an alliance with it. So that it's not unconscious anymore, not just bubbling up in ways that are disruptive, but really creating a more whole being. I wonder if the mystery card is going to be the sun card, right? To represent kind of all aspects of ourselves now brought to light. Nothing is hidden. There is no nighttime land when we are the blazing sun. Nighttime only exists here on earth, right? When the sun, when we've kind of rotated, uh, we've turned our face away from the sun. But the sun, there's no night, there's no day. It's blazing all the time, right? And maybe my astronomy and, and all that's not um, exactly accurate. I don't know these things. I've never been up there. But it works as a metaphor, right? And so we really are searching ourselves and discovering those parts of ourselves that um, these are our resources. This is the wilderness where we find all of the things we actually need to succeed in this endeavor. Now, this might be a career thing, might be a family thing, might be friends. This could be a spiritual thing, you know, um, more than anything else. Uh, it could be a romance, I don't know. There's uh, a picture of a door. There's a very special door in your life. I don't know if doorways are very important to you or if there's one particular door that always kind of stands out. I don't know if it's like, if it's got a weird color, if it's like a bright orange door or something. Um, but there's something with a door going on with you. It's a personal symbol or it's something in your environment that is, has come to represent something else. Maybe it's something from your dreams representing that doorway to the shadow self, that doorway to our kind of alter ego. Yeah. Because the moon card is sometimes that kind of a doorway. This is the doorway to our dreams. It's a lucid dreaming. and You might be experiencing more and more of that very vivid dreams or even the very lucid dreams almost as if you are you're meant to find something in these dreams and so there's maybe there's a recurring dream and you're meant to find that other part of yourself to form an alliance but see the ten the ten of wands looks like two separate beings but really it's not we know that the ten is really what goes right back to the unity it's a return to the the wholeness so it looks like two or it appears like multiplicity, like it's 10. Really, it's a unity. Okay. So, um, we've got our major arcana energies. We've got a little bit of fire. We, uh, we don't have really a lot of water, but the moon card and the, the chariot are water energies because it's Pisces, it's Cancer. These are watery cards. Um, so I think it really, this takes the place of that water. And this is also a car that the two energies combine and say, we do need to make that journey into the underworld in order to connect with our true needs, our true desires, our true powers, our true capabilities. But to find that to find that school of crabs <laughs> within you, um, to find this to find the realization that we are looking for our people. We are looking for our tribe. And the cancer energy, the chariot, is in the position of what you don't want. Consciously, you might say, no, I don't want people. I'm doing this on my own. I've never had people, whatever, you know. But the cancer energy is asking us to take a deeper look at that 
And maybe you don't want people. Yeah, you don't want the wrong people. You don't want the, the, the home and the connection of the tribe. You don't want the wrong one. But this is still a deep underlying need for you. As for, for all of us, really. Finding our... Finding where we belong. You know? Finding our tribe. So, anyway, I think we've got the water energy. Anyway. We've got some air, too. We have air, air, and even... Aquarius, even the star card, this is air. Okay. This is the combination, I think, of the fire air and the water air here becomes this spiritualized air water combination. This is this is like a new state of matter. You know, it's not quite air, it's not quite water, it's something in between. It's that spiritual water, that spiritual air that's coming in. And it's the blessings. It's the divine energy coming straight into you. And this is your task in life, is to receive the divine energy and to channel it to the earth, to express it, to be, to be the giver of this energy, to relay the message out to the world, you know, to manifest your gift, to be you. That's our duty in life. To find out what our divine essence is and to let it flow into the world, just like we see in this card. Receiving from above, letting go down below, and it's also letting go of all these preconceived things. Letting go of this idea that I am just my conscious mind, I am just my ego, I am just the Capricorn energy. No. You actually have every other uh, sign of the zodiac in your chart. So really, when people ask me, well, which, what reading should I watch? My sun, my moon, my rising? Well, yes, but honestly, you need to watch all of them. Because you have, to a greater or lesser intensity, all of the signs of the zodiac stamped into your spiritual essence. Okay, but I know that would take a lot of time. We'd be here all day. Trust me, I know. Um, so we, we kind of pick and choose. What are those strongest placements for you? You know? Uh, maybe it's not your sun, your moon, or your rising. Maybe you have a bunch of other planets in some other sign. Watch that sign. You, be, you, you determine. There's a link in my video descriptions to a, a website where you can plug in your birth information and you can see your astrological chart. I don't run the website. I have no affiliation with it, but it's something I've used. Um, so you can find out what planets you got in which signs and which signs you want to watch. And then you can come back here to the channel. You can watch those particular signs. Maybe it's only one. Maybe it's three or four. Either way. Yeah. Also, keep in mind, this. I need to make a bigger announcement about this. I don't have any Facebook pages. I don't have any TikTok pages. I don't have any Instagram accounts. The only place to interact with me is here on YouTube, in the community uh, page, in the comments. You can send an email to me, paul at doveandserpenttarot.com. I don't do personal readings right now. Anyone on Facebook who's trying to sell you something is not me. Don't be fooled. Don't fall for it. They are scammers. Scammers everywhere. Okay? I will never ask you for money. I will never try to sell you a personal reading unless you hear me say it out of this, this mug on this channel. Don't give anyone your hard-earned money. Okay? Very important. I'll make a larger announcement uh, in a video soon. Uh, to remind everybody, because I don't want to see anyone getting taken advantage of. And it makes me quite angry that someone is impersonating me through Facebook and TikTok and trying to sell you a private reading. I don't know how much they're charging or, or what they're going to try to give you in exchange. Probably nothing. Probably just take your money. It's not me. It's a scam. Okay? Please be safe. Anyway, um, where were we? Uh, we've had we have the air into this uh, star energy, right? So this is the fire of air. This is the water of air, and it's kind of the blending of above and below, right? Fire and water, sun and moon, um, above and below, heaven and earth, conscious and unconscious. Um, really, I think they'd be switched around because this the fire. This is kind of the conscious mind. This is the rapid fire decisions, which is where. Um, data comes in and we immediately respond we push something out we process something immediately right and we we are making decisions we're giving we're giving a response to the data that comes in 
This is very fire, very conscious mind. But then we have the queen of swords, and this is very unconscious. It's very watery, something that kind of has to, we have to distill things first. The data comes in. We've got to soak it in the water. It's got to steep for a while, right? And then we can respond. This is the tea. This is the coffee. Yeah. And so the blending of this together, I think, is really allowing us to tap into this intuition. Yeah, to tap into this star light that is guiding our way. It's our lodestar. This is the light shining from us, connecting with the light shining from the universe, and then our path is complete. We know where we're going, what we're doing. Now, what are you doing? Where are you going? Well, we got this really good earth energy here. And what we're trying to do is um, prepare the soil to grow this best life. This is really, it, it looks dark. It's a seven of pentacles. The sevens are all about confidence. We're not worried here. We don't see this as a bad card at all because this is the beginning of the progress. This is, this is everything that we've been waiting for. It's now starting to grow. We're starting to see it. And it's because we, we realize that we have all the resources we need now in a very practical way. Um, also, there is a connection with elephants here. I don't know if it's Ganesha, if it's um, like a jade. I almost feel like it's a jade elephant with the trunk upraised. Um, but I'm seeing green, a green elephant, yeah? Uh, this is, in a very practical way, the resources that you need, the money, the time, the space, the people, the help, you know, the tools, the car, whatever it is. All of this is coming your way, okay? Especially with the Nine of Pentacles, you are gaining everything that you need. You're discovering what you need within you and things that you need in a very practical, real-world sense are coming your way. I feel like you have very good money instincts. Yeah. Um, I feel like you've always been very good at securing the resources that you need. And so now we've got all these resources. You've got to have the inner resources in order to direct all of this money or whatever it is, right? You got the car. You got to figure out where you're driving it. How do you, do you know how to drive a car and where are you going to take it? Or where is it taking you, right? Um, the month of April is going to be very important for you. What is, go what is the deal with April? Is it a birthday, an anniversary? Is there something that's supposed to be happening in April? I know it's kind of just the beginning of spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, so we have the transition of the season, but I also feel like April itself is very... A very important, uh, maybe April Fool's Day, right? Um, the eight month of April is very significant for you. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure why. Um, the nine of pentacles on its own is the visible sign of progress, right? This is us living the best life. This is us doing things on a day-to-day, -day, working hard, having gains, having setbacks. But in the bigger picture, we can see things are going up. It might be down, up, down, up, down, up, like the, I don't know, stock prices or something, right? Um, the overall pattern is up, okay? So we're seeing a lot of progress here. And this is something I think that is, is really creating your, your best life. This feels to me like this is the big thing that you've been investing in. And so we're really, we have these resources and we've really, we're investing all of this resource. And now it kind of like, well, you know, when you, I don't know if you invest money, right? I, and I don't know too much about this. I'm not a financial advisor, obviously. Um, but you invest something. It's almost like you, you give up a lot of money and you put it somewhere else. And then you've got to like, it's going to start low and you've got to just hope that it kind of, slowly creeps its way up, right? I think that's what you want your stocks to do. Your money, your investments, whether it's time, energy, love, uh, whatever it is, we invest so much of ourselves into something and then we just hope that we get it back plus a little extra, right? Maybe someone's loaning you money, you're loaning someone money, you're making an investment into a business. It's gonna be a while before you get that money back. 
Yeah. But there's a confidence here with the seven of pentacles that, yeah, you've put all your, all your eggs in this basket, but you know these eggs are going to hatch, the chickens are going to grow up, and they'll be really wonderful companions, you know? Um, that this is a business or an investment that is going to grow, and it might be, it might be seed money right, to start this business, but eventually it will grow, it will give you a return on your investment, and, and it'll, it'll keep giving you more, you know. This is all the time and energy we put into tilling the ground, preparing the soil, planting the seeds, and watering it, and then we wait, and we hope in a couple of months we got something to eat, yeah. But there's a confidence here, and I think the confidence really comes through everything that we've been talking about. We know that this is growing, we know that this is going to be a wonderful banquet, it's going to be a wonderful harvest. Now, let's go to the path of the serpent. And as we do this, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. And it helps out the channel, and I really do appreciate that. Okay. Uh, we talked about the Ten of Wands. That is kind of the... Um, it's all the work, I, I think really this is signifying all of the work at the beginning. The difficult part is really just kind of breaking through the soil, getting the first step of things going. If we think of a seed that's trying to sprout through the earth, the seed cracks open, it starts to split, and the little sprout starts to wiggle its way up. That's the hardest part. But then once it breaks through the soil, it's got sunlight, it's got the fresh air, and now it's just going to... Now we know what's going to grow. So it's like the Ten of Wands is us waiting for that first breakthrough. And then we're just like, yes, it happened. It worked. Now it's now I got nothing to worry about. You know, we're waiting to see that sprout pop through the dirt. And then we celebrate. And then it's like all of this stress, all of this burden has kind of been lifted. Right? We still know that it's going to take a while for it to grow. We got to be careful, protect it from strong winds or torrential rains or whatever. Um, but the biggest, it's like we're, we're weighted, we're suspended with bated breath, waiting to see that sprout pop through the soil, you know. And uh, that is the moment where we feel the relief of a lot of this tension. Now, this is also to the combining of forces like we talked about. But at the beginning, this is the difficulty of getting through that soil, getting that first, that first breakthrough that eases the burden. Now you can breathe. Right, and now we just work hard and we continue, and it's going to be fine, you know. But this is that initial breakthrough that we really—it's like our our heart stops beating. We like we don't we're not even breathing until that happens, and then then the relief comes. Yeah. Uh, the hierophant in the environment. There is a lot more for you still to learn. Okay, so I feel like this is um, this is a, a business or some kind of project or some kind of a, a thing you're doing in life that requires continued education. Yeah, it requires you to kind of keep learning the ropes as you go. Yeah, you're learning more about the process, what works, what doesn't work uh, outside, but also about yourself, what works and doesn't work for you, how you approach things, how you feel about things, how you think about things, how you talk about things, how you decide things. Are you tea or are you coffee? Are you both? Or do, does it depend on the day, you know? Um, but I think as much as this is a very practical project or business or, you know, endeavor for you, I feel like there is a deep spiritual um, evolution that's taking place simultaneously, as above, so below, right? Also, did you get locked out of something recently? I'm getting the message that you got locked out of your car, of your house, of your business or something like that you had to like call somebody and you you had to wait for someone to show up to let you in because you you got locked out and if you left your keys in there or you left your I don't I don't know what happened you you couldn't get in somewhere yeah uh, I think that happened to you but I think it's also a metaphor for feeling sometimes locked out of our true being yeah but that's that's changing now. We're making that progress. We're getting through this, this kind of uh, this darkness, and our our alter ego, our true self, is no longer a mystery to us. We are uniting with that. There's an exchange going on. Yeah, it's kind of an exchange between the uh, the star, 
well, the star and the chariot, but really between the moon and the hierophant. See, the moon is feeling that we don't know what's in there, and the hierophant is that which is teaching us what is in there. And it's our higher self. This is, the again, the interface between heaven and earth, between conscious and unconscious mind. And we've got to follow the signs and the symbols and the synchronicities. As I always say, those are the guides in the external world that correspond with things that are going on in a spiritual way. That's why these readings, they always have this kind of esoteric or spiritual or internal component that's reflected in the things that you're actually doing in your life. Yeah. It's like a literal chicken, or does it just mean we're scared? Right? It's both. Yeah. Let's look at the mystery card see what Jimbo's got for us today. Um, perhaps we need some water energy. I'd like to see a 10 of cups to go with our 10 of wands. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. Here we go. Oh, it's a two of pentacles. Uh, or not wands. Reminds me of this. But literally, a two, right? So it's kind of like two heads are better than one. It's kind of like um, on my own, this would be too overwhelming. But in partnership with spirit, in partnership with my true self, in partnership with somebody who may be a literal partner, again, as above, so below, it, with this partnership, with the two, then all of the struggles, all of the concern, all of the overwhelming energy seems to disappear. Right? If we think this as the Two of Wands, there's a lot that we're up against. There's a lot of other force in there. Then it all settles down. Now it's just the two together doing this thing, right? So I really feel that there is the spirit of, of togetherness, of union, of doing things together as one unified force. And that's, that's the central focus here is the idea of that union, a union of consciousness, a union of will. It's not a two of cups. It's a two of wands. It's fire. It's essential. It's spiritual. It's creative. It goes to the very core of who we are. And I think union, right, the alliance, the partnership, is how we really make this life, this project, succeed. Anyway, we're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around for that, there's a link at the end of the video. There's a link in the video description, and there might even be one up here in the corner. Um, new readings for Capricorn every Thursday and Sunday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. I'm here every day. Come back and see me tomorrow. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. does not cost you anything. And leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.